here to tell you to, about the nativity story. So once there was Mary and Joseph, they were about to get engaged. But then one day when Mary was just spending her normal life, an angel came. Then the angel said to Mary, don't be afraid. I have bring you good news and good willings. For you have been chosen by the Son of God, by, by God to conceive the Son of God. She went to go tell Joseph. Joseph was like, what? So then, so then he decided to secretly break up with her. And then Joseph was sleeping, and then he saw a bright light, and then it was an angel, and he said, Do not be afraid. God will trust you. You're having a baby. So Joseph had to take Mary, and the baby was due soon. So he put her on a donkey, and they went to Bethlehem. But when they got there, the innkeeper said, there's no room in the end, but you can stay in the stable. Um, um, baby Jesus is born in the manger. Now there were, in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, a angel of the Lord stood before them. See, and they would be a baby, a savior, born in a manger. The shepherds were so excited to see their finally awaited savior. They left their flocks and went over to go see, and went went over to go see the baby Jesus. They rode day and night to see baby Jesus born for me. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, you're the brightest star by far. Then the wise men saw a sto the store and they and they went to baby Jesus too and they brought gifts. Sweet smelly spices. And then that is the story of the nativity.
God does not judge, but heals. God does not tear down, but builds up. For God so loves the world. We celebrate God's love in Christ together. For all he has done and all he is yet to do. For each one of you are the manger in which the Christ is born again and again and again. Chosen and gifted and loved by God, each one of you are created in the holy image. Each one of you are wonderfully made and a blessing to this world. You are the light of the world, Jesus says. And so we gather in God's house and you fill it with light. <coughs> we honor a noble people and a way of life when we recognize the land of which this church has been built. For thousands of years, the first peoples have walked upon this land. As an act of truth and reconciliation, we acknowledge the original caretakers of this land on which this beautiful church was built. I invite you to join with me. West Dale United Church is situated on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Mississauga and the land covered by the Williams Treaty. to join with me in our call to worship. We gather in God's house. God's glory fills this place and our homes. The moment is near. summons us with the exuberant hopefulness of a child. God birthing love, open us once more to new beginnings, as many possibilities as there are stars in the sky. Advent amaze us, for God has made known, was made known in a tiny child. Voices sing to you. And our hearts dance with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's wonderful to have the Fenton family <coughs> help us along our Advent journey. Hey, be wonderful. God of promises, we gather in expectation. In this name of the loving God, love be born among us. 
So let us open the stable door and kneel. We gather in faith, believing again that love is stronger than fear, and the darkness will never put out your light. On the first Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle for hope. On the second Sunday, we lit the candle for peace. Last Sunday, we lit a candle for joy. Today, we light a candle for love. As the flame begins to burn, let the love of God warm our hearts as Mary's love welcomed the Christ child into the world so long ago in Bethlehem. Mary, the mother of the light of grace, sung a love song to the Lord. Be born again in us, your manger. Make us your Bethlehem. Let us ponder the word made flesh. Let us glory in the lightning of a flame that will remain forever in light.
candles have been lit. Hey, hope, peace, joy, and love. And tonight when we gather, we'll light one in the middle of Christ's candle. The center. I want you to lift up your voices and join in singing a wonderful hymn about Mary. Mary, the woman of the props. gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38. An angel tells about the birth of Jesus. One month later God sent the angel Gabriel to the town of Nazareth in Galilee with a message for a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to Joseph from the family of King David. The angel greeted Mary and said, You are truly blessed. The Lord is with you. Mary was confused by the angel's words and wondered what they meant. Then the angel told Mary, Don't be afraid. 
God is pleased with you, and you will have a son. His name will be Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God Most High. The Lord God will make him king as his ancestor David was. He will rule the people of Israel forever, and his kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, How can this happen? I am not married. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come down to you, and God's power will come over you. So your child will be called the Holy Son of God. Your relative Elizabeth is also going to have a son, even though she is old. No one thought she could ever have a baby, but in three months she will have a son. Nothing is impossible for God. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Thank you, Brenda. Beautiful. Grace and peace to you in the name of God's beloved, whose beautiful heart beats in you. Would you pray with me? God of manger and mystery, creator, spirit, living word, eternal wisdom, make us wise. Come, holy fire, ageless wisdom, and speak to us in the beating of our hearts and the stirring of our spirits. And give us young Mary's eagerness for your call. Hold our hearts to the beat of your amazing grace, and whisper words of wisdom. Give us the language to speak your love in a thousand ways. We pray in the spirit of Emmanuel. Amen. Saw the children leave. I was going to say something about Santa. <laughs> I moved this week. Seems like I've been moving all the time, but uh, the Friday before, Dennis and, and uh, my friend Warren he helped me move a lot of things and I hired movers on Friday to move the heavier stuff. And uh, I have a storage unit and, and a smaller place, and now I'm moving into a bigger place. And uh, I'm excited. And, and so we went to the storage unit first. and when I was at the storage unit, I guess I can safely say this, but uh, when I was there, there was a young mother, and, and she had a storage unit, and she was grabbing all these parcels, all these gifts, toys, and, uh, and, and filling up her car. She had, and I said, so this is where Santa hides his toys. And, uh, and she said, now I have to go home and wrap them. All kinds of wonderful toys. And I thought, well, that takes me back. There was an article in Broadview Magazine, United Church Magazine, uh, this week, an online uh, article about wrapping. Why do we wrap presents? Why do we wrap them? And uh, I'm pretty lazy, so I like to just put them in a bag or, or in uh, like a paper bag or a Sobeys bag or you just give them. Or I remember one Christmas, I just said, "Close your eyes," and then I just gave them. Oh, dry. Right. There you go. And that's an easy way to do it. Turn the lights off and then turn them back on. Pretty much everybody who gives a Christmas present wraps them in colorful paper, and I've been so blessed uh, uh, this week and last week and today. And uh, I noticed on, uh, I, I, I peek into the bag, and there are usually tissue paper in there, colorful, and uh, there was a, a can of Guinness on my desk this morning, and uh, <laughs> I assure you I didn't drink it before I came out, and <laughs> I'll wait till tonight, after the last service. so kind and generous. I see it every day. There's more in the pretty box, the gift wrap, but why? So this article talks about why do we wrap uh, gifts? How did it come to be? And the historical answer, uh, the author says, and he's a minister in Toronto. He says, back in the 19th century, most people gave each other homemade gifts, which were unwrapped. They were wrapped in intimacy and affection, usually without any wrapping paper. And then stores wanted to encourage people to buy Christmas presents there, and, and so they also sold wrapping paper. In time, everybody was buying wrapping paper for almost all Christmas gifts, even the homemade ones. The Hallmark Brothers invented Christmas wrapping paper in 1917. Well, they ran out of tissue paper, and then they sold fancy French pattern paper instead. Why do we need to wrap a gift at all? I remember one Christmas, well, our stocking, everything in our stocking was wrapped. My mother liked to wrap, or I should say, Santa liked to wrap everything. And usually in the funny pages of the Winter Star, Ziggy, you'd unwrap and there's Ziggy, and, uh, You'd read them afterwards, and there's something magical about wrapping something. This temporary sense of possibility, what's in it, where one thing could be many. Wrapping paper lends a gift of cosmic possibility, a connection to the rest 
of the universe literally and in the imagination. All those possibilities last until the moment we rip open the paper to reveal. That sense of possibility seems entirely in keeping with Christmas. But we are invited to believe that almost anything is possible. It's not hard to imagine why we have opted for that sense of wonder and possibility. And throughout the season of Advent, we have unwrapped hope and joy and peace and love. Today I want us to sit close to Mary. Jesus' mother Mary has taken her son's place as her primary teacher today. Part of that is because he has not yet been born, but it is also because God chose her for more reasons than in her ability to bear a child. She has been given a gift. Mary's yes was essential to God's purpose. Without Mary's yes, none of it would have happened. Her willingness to accept the risk that went along with it gave her a place in Christian history like no other. Though we do not often stop to think about it, her wisdom is different from her son's. She has her own perspective on the story, her own way of proclaiming the gospel. It's so important that it's captured in the first chapter of Luke's gospel. Mary. But once a month I take a drive to Pickering and I go to a Jesuit retreat center there. And I meet with a Jesuit priest uh, and teacher, uh, Bill Robbins. He taught physics in Nepal and India for many, many years. He's 85 now. He's come back to Canada to retire and to offer his spiritual wisdom. And I meet with him once a month and we talk. And Often we meet in the library at the retreat center, the Jesuit retreat center. And in the library, there's a whole section of the library all on Mary. All on Mary. Now Mary is not nearly as important to Protestants as she is to Catholics and Orthodox Christians. Advent is really the only time she shows up in most Protestant churches, chiefly to hold the baby Jesus in the Christmas pageant, and then go back into the closet with Joseph and the shepherds until next year. We do not talk about Mary. Let's talk about I like to think of Mary as Jesus' first disciple. I like to think of Joseph as his second. At the Jerusalem temple, for instance, when she confronts Jesus for losing his family accidentally on purpose when he was just 12 years old, remember that? Why have you treated us like this? She says, look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. You can imagine a child lost in a crown. Or at the house in Galilee where she goes to extract him from the mob of followers that take him home. Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. When at the wedding in Cana in Galilee she tries to convince Jesus to produce more wine by saying they have no wine. And he says to her, woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. Mary not only loves Jesus, Mary is not afraid of him. She goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, trying to care for the grown man who is so busy taking care of other people that he won't take care of himself. She's there at the beginning with no one but poor Joseph for a midwife. And she is there at the end when one male disciple left to lean on while she listens to her boy give up his last breath. She is there at the garden tomb with the other Mary. She is there at the, at the new beginning in the upper room, numbered among his disciples. Mary is always there. Today we meet Mary. She's a timid teenager who is a blessed, the blessed one who accepts Gabriel's proposal when he comes on God's behalf to ask her for her hand. Let it be with me according to your word. Or is it the unmarried mother to be, who 
is blessed, the one who is so caught up in what God is bringing into the world through her body that she has no time for shame. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy in his, his name is Mary the Blessing, because she is so quiet, or perhaps she is so outspoken, because she is such a good mother, or because she is such a good prophet. We can say all of the above, if you want, but based on every Christmas, Christmas pageant that I have ever seen, the Church has cast its vote for the quiet Mary, the gentle Mary whose chief virtue is her ability to bear a son. <coughs> Prophets and angels have lots of lines, shepherds and magi have lots of lines, even Gabriel has lots of lines, but Mary has only one line, I will happily carry out God's will, she says. Mary is easily the most famous woman in the Bible. This past summer I mentioned in a sermon, how I met a young father at the Supermead Park. He was there from Toronto camping with his family. Nazir is his name, a Muslim, about 40 years old, and he introduced me to his daughter, and he said, my daughter's name is Mary. Actually, Miriam in Arabic, and Miriam in Hebrew. He told me that Miriam is a Hebrew name, is one of the most popular names for a Jewish girl in first century Palestine, not because it was the name of Jesus' mother, but because it was the name of Moses' sister, Miriam. The brave young Miriam who saved her baby brother's life by putting him up for adoption or on Pharaoh's daughter, or putting him where a Pharaoh's daughter was sure to find him. And he said, my hope is that my little girl is as brave as Mary. He called her a prophet, the prophet Miriam, who banged her tambourine and sang a victory song when the Israelites arrived on the safe side of the Red Sea. The brave Miriam, who joined her brother Aaron in questioning Moses' authority by asking how the Lord spoken only through Moses, has he not spoken also through us? The Bible translates the Hebrew Miriam into the Greek Mary, but let's call her Miriam today. She is the Jewish girl who has the chutzpah to question the angel Gabriel when he presents her with God's plan. How can this be? She is the pregnant, unwed teenager who goes missing from her family to visit her cousin Elizabeth, whose own miracle baby has a flip inside her when she opens the door to Mary and blesses Blessed are you among women, Elizabeth says, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. That's when Miriam lets loose the Magnificat that says, singing her heart out like her namesake did on the far side of her own Red Sea. About God's defense of the defenseless, God's rescue of the lonely, God's upheaval of the proud, and overthrowing of those in power. It's a good thing none of Herod's people can hear this Miriam's song because they know what to do with people like her. But this Miriam is fearless in her praise of God's faithfulness to the old, old promise, not a promise that will be replaced by the child Miriam is about to bear, but one that will be renewed in the flesh of this unlikely mother and her unlikely child. Whatever is about to happen, she knows it's going down in history. The first chapter for someone named Mary, perhaps, but not for somebody named Miriam. The God of old is already thousands and thousands of pages deep into the story of salvation, as committed as ever to those made in the divine image, for, those for whom God is about to do a new thing, as startling as the things God has done before. Watch, this God says, sending an angel named Gabriel, to visit a very formidable Jewish girl named Miriam in a backwater town in north central Galilee. Depending on what she says, all you can do is ask. Her answer could be the best verse yet in the song God has been singing since Sinai. I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people. And Mary said yes. 
Jesus was raised by a mother who knew all about the cost of breaking rules, bearing insults, making dangerous speeches, and ascribing it all to God. You know, Jesus got the color of his eyes from her, but why not her courage as well? All generations will call me blessed if it is true, and it is true. Emmanuel, the God who is with us, Emmanuel, not God up there somewhere yelling at us from the sidelines of life, but the God who meets us in the midst of our struggles, calming the storms of life by walking with them, with us in them. That is where God is born, just there, in any cradle we will offer Him. singing a beautiful hymn, What Child Is This? <clears throat>
the morning light of this new day that you have made for us, we glimpse again your image deep within us, the thread of your glory woven into the very fabric of each one of us. Shepherd of the stars, whose glory is revealed in vastness and in power, yet whose secret name is love, we gather in faith. Be born again in us your manger. Make Westdale your Bethlehem. God of promises, we gather in expectation, listening, loving God. Love be born among us. So let us open the stable door in Neo. Let us glory in the lighting of a flame that will remain forever lit. God of Bethlehem, free flowing spirit, gather us together, dance with us. Spirit of wonder, be born in us, in your world once more. Word from the heart of God, human face of holiness, alive within us. Before we were born, you were delivered, cradled, nursed, experienced childhood and youth, were baptized, filled with the Spirit, and proclaimed the good news of God's new world. You created time and the earth in starry space and journeyed with your people. You gave Mary a song to show the source of love. Heal all that is broken in our hearts, in our streets, in our world. We pray for all those who we love and who we carry with us today as we lift them up to you in silence or spoken aloud. <coughs> May they find strength in their souls. May they know peace and healing in their prayers. Bless the Creator, shine upon them with healing and with grace. O Lord, ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. O Lord, make us channels of your peace. For we pray in the name of the one whose name is peace, whose heart is peace, whose soul is peace. We pray in Jesus' name who taught us how to pray together, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And that we may not of life, the gift of your life is a source of blessing in this world. So let us glorify God through our gifts. With joy we present our gifts of commitment and support for the work of Christ Church right here in Peterborough and through the Mission and Service Fund and the Healing Fund across this country and around the world.
these gifts, we bring ourselves, O God, in response to the greatest gift of all, the child of Bethlehem. And may these gifts open others to the blessings you give this Christmas, the gift of childlike wonder, the gift of radiant hope, the gift of peace which passes all understanding. Through our gifts, mend the world. Through our gifts, may friendship be experienced. Through our gifts, bring joy to life. Through our gifts, make healing possible. Through our gifts, create community. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless our gifts of time and talent and treasure. And may they sing to the world of your love. In the spirit of Emmanuel, we pray. Amen.
heart and spirit as we journey together, strengthened by God's grace and brightened by the Spirit, follow the way of Christ into the world. Go from here with open arms, with heads held high, and with love in your hearts, for each one of you are beautiful and loved by God. And may your life magnify the Spirit of Christ, and may you know the fullness of God's favor resting upon you as you leave this place. Blessed ones, bless, go in peace and take peace into the world. And may Christ's light illuminate your path and his peace fill your heart. Carry the light of Christ into the world. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. <laughs>